Okay, <clears throat> tonight we're going to go over uh, uh, an interesting little portion of um, PowerShell, and I found this interesting. I actually uh, did this wrong for a couple days, and uh, you know, sent it all the way up the flagpole to Redmond, who, you know, after a couple days, finally came back. Eventually, they they said it. I mean, uh, initially they said it was a bug. And then, they, and then they came back eventually and said, oh, wait a minute, no, we found out how to do it. So I figured <clears throat> what I'd better do is document this while it was still fresh in my mind because I know if I messed it up, then, um, you know, a bunch of you guys are going to mess it up as well. <clears throat> okay, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to change a, uh, we're trying to change a job owner in PowerShell. Now, the reason we're doing this, this actually came up at work. I've got something in the neighborhood of 600 jobs on one server. And I was trying to drop a user, and I couldn't drop a user because he owned jobs. Well, okay, how do you find out uh, which jobs they own when you've got that many jobs, right? Or even when you've got just a couple dozen. I mean, it's kind of a pain to open up each one of them, right? And the sequel to do that is actually pretty long. I mean, you, you know, you've got you to query the system tables and and do a join, right? Um, it's not horrendous, but it's not the best query. It's not the best method for doing something like that. And that's only finding it. I mean, what if, you know, you had 700 jobs on your server and he owned, you know, 200 of them? I mean, you know, you've got to find a way to, to reasonably change those, change those job owners. <clears throat> and PowerShell provides the absolute perfect method for doing that, but it's a little bit trickier than some of the other stuff we've been doing in PowerShell, which is why I'm which is, is why I had a hard time figuring this out and why I'm documenting it now. So, to start off, we're over here. I've only got one job, right? I'm only going to do it on one job because, you know, why should I do it on, on a different one? So, I mean, what I, it'll work the same on several jobs because it's, it's actually going to be a, a, a loop inside of uh, PowerShell. So, you go down to your jobs tree, you right-click on jobs and go start PowerShell. You can do this from PowerShell proper and all that stuff and navigate yourself. I'm already in here though and this is just easier, right? So first we've got to find what we're looking for. We've got to find the job that we're looking for and that's actually relatively easy, right? So from here you want to get child items, GCI, pipe that to where object, that goes inside curly brackets, and then you could say where the current where the the current variable the current record which is dollar sign underscore um, name is like put it in double quotes and let's say let's say uh, sa actually this one's gonna this one's easy because it's gonna be where it equals sa so I'll say where it equals sa And then I'm going to be nice to myself and pipe that to a table. And I want to get the name and the uh, owner login name. And here comes our our uh, our old friend auto size. And I don't have anything that equal that is with SA. I could have sworn I did. Okay. Well, let's do it like this. Like star. Let's say star. I still don't have anything. Could have sworn I did. Let me see. Let me refresh this real quick. It says I say right there. Unless I'm on the wrong server. Okay, I see what the problem is. I'm an idiot. Let's go to the screen. Let's go up here. There we go. Okay, look at this. I'm an idiot. This is why I love live demos, huh? Not name, where on our login name, I'll just say get rid of that. There we go. God, it's amazing what you can find when you're searching on the right property, isn't it? Okay, 
So I've got two jobs here that are owned by SA, and I want to change. I'm going to change them both. Why not? Right? I'll change them both back later. <clears throat> so what I need to do is I need to say get child object, and I'm going to pipe it to the where again. Actually, I've already got all that, don't I? There we go. So let's just kill all this stuff. There. Okay. So I've already got the bulk of that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my object my object, and I'm gonna filter where the owner login name equals SA. <clears throat> and of course, if you were looking for, you know, you know Joe Blow, you would filter on Joe Blow, right? You would filter on whatever you, on whatever you found. Okay. So now that I got that, um, I need to filter that to for each. Put in my curly brackets again. My current iteration and call the set owner login name method set underscore owner name it goes in parentheses has two quotes and let's set it to to my domain account so <clears throat> and again this method isn't case sensitive I just do that to make it easier to read so what we've got here <clears throat> we're going to find a child object. We're going to filter. We're going to pipe that to a filter that says only get the ones that have an owner login name of SA. So only the jobs that are owned by SA. And we're going to pipe that to a for each loop. This is uh, the percent is uh, an alias for for each. So for each one of those, I'm going to take the current record and I'm going to call its set owner login name method. And I'm going to set it and I'm going to pass it in the name of the new login that I want it to have. That in mind, I hit enter. Oh, I'm always glad when I don't get red. So with that, I should be able to come in and see my new record. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can see here that um, it's showing me that there aren't any, which means that they have been changed from SA to my domain account, right? And if you come here, ah, but it's still SA. How can it possibly be still SA? Because over here, if I run this guy again, it doesn't return anything. And as a matter of fact, if I take out the filter and just do that, it shows me that they have indeed been changed to my to my domain name so where is this discrepancy coming from because let's see what happens if I open up a new PowerShell window I open up a new PowerShell window and run a query of the same one pipe it to format table name comma oh what was that again owner login name auto size is our friend see it shows that as being SA and this guy right here shows it as being my domain account SA domain account so which one of them is right <clears throat> well as it as it turns out they're both kind of right this one is what exists on the server and this one is what's currently being cached in your session um, the problem is with um, the way SMO works for jobs anyway, for this anyway, um, you have to commit. Now you can see that this isn't committed. If I do this, where is it? There we go. So if I if I call the refresh method, okay, I've just refreshed it. That means I've I've gotten the new information from the server, right? And then do this again. No, it's still showing the old value. Huh. Or it's still showing the new value. It should have refreshed it. Refresh. Oh, again, it still thinks that that's SA because it's still reading off the cache version. So if I call the refresh method for all the jobs and then get that, See, there you go. It goes back to SA, right? Boy, one mystery after another, isn't it? So, 
the question is how do we get this to actually refresh on the server to actually persist on the server as it turns out there's one extra step than there is in a lot and a lot of the other things you're going to do in PowerShell you have to actually you have to manually commit it and unfortunately it's not called commit um, let's run the line again there we go we're gonna set the owner equal to that now we're gonna call um, instead of that we're gonna call the alter method just like that and while we're there I want to go ahead and kill this real quick. <laughs> there we go. So I just altered, which means I just committed all those changes. If they would call it commit, then you could probably figure this stuff out on your own, right? Now we want to refresh. Now we should be able to see what we want. There we go. And now our change is complete. If I come in here, my change is complete, right? So now, I'm going to talk you through that one more time. That's my old one. Let's get to, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to talk you through this one more time, and we'll change them back. How's that? So here we go. Okay, so talking you through this one more time, you get the child object, you pipe that to a filter, to the where object filter, where the owner login name equals SA <clears throat> equals whatever you're looking for right pipe that to a for each and then for each one of those you call the set owner login name pass it the new login name that you want it to have okay so I did that actually huh. yep. since they're changed I kinda need to do that don't I because that wouldn't have yielded any results <clears throat> okay so I just did that properly now I changed it from the domain account to the SA account right now I need to refresh it or com I mean now I need to commit it and that's going to be the alter method now I can already see these changes here okay you have to refresh this See, it's SA again. But if I want to see it in this window, then I have to call the refresh. Now, I can see them as SA again. Fair enough? Okay. Um, that's a pretty specific uh, little job there. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty specific task, but that's what Midnight DBA is all about. I want to give you, you know, one specific task and then move on. So, um... Good luck with that, and I hope you have fun changing jobs. And by the way, I'm sure, I'm I'm sure you uh, you have to do this if you want to change job names or anything else like that too. I would, I would assume that anything you have to do with jobs is also going to take this this alter method to commit. Um, I haven't tested that thoroughly, but it's probably a pretty safe bet. Okay, good luck. Back. Um, it's not often that I do this, but right as I was compiling this video. I, uh, it just dawned on me a, a more efficient way to do this, and I wanted to throw it out there. I, I decided I could either I could either make a second video to update it, or just go ahead and tack it onto the end of the old one. So I know I just said goodbye to you, but I'm back. So here I'm just going to run through this real quick. I'm not going to explain anything other than the the new stuff, right? So I'm going to come in here to PowerShell, and I'm going to change my object again. Uh, what was I doing? Do you see I pipe it to where object do these guys here? Um, generation uh, name equals. I actually don't know what it is now. So let me refresh this. What is it now? It's SA? Okay, if you say so. Where it's SA. Pipe that to a for each. 
curly brackets. And then set new name. Equal to there. So that's what we've got right now, right? That's what we that's what we started with originally. That's the original syntax. Now let's make sure once and for all that let me refresh this one more time. I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, so that is SA. And this one is looking for SA and it's changing it to that. Okay. So just a minute ago <clears throat> we called the refresh we 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 changed we called the set method then we called the refer the alter, then we called the refresh, right? Well, we can do this all in one statement. If I just use a statement terminator here, and then say there dot alter, another statement terminator, and say there, oops, there dot refresh. Let me make sure I got that alter right. Come on. There we go. Alter. And then refresh. I should be able to do this all in one sentence. So if I do that, I've got that. And now... Damn it, come here. auto size there we go and now you see it's changed in one single line instead of all those other lines that I had to that I went through now I can change it and now I should be able to refresh this guy and there's my new there's my new name and one more time we'll change it back come here there we go. All right. Okay, good. So I'll just reverse these. So I'm going to change it back to SA. Uh, look for all the ones that are my domain account. So now I'm doing this in one line. So I've got the, the same thing I had before, only now I'm using the line terminator and I'm using and I'm calling the alter immediately. Then I'm using the line terminator again. You can see it. You can see it sucking up on the on the border there. And then I'm calling the refresh all in one line. And now when I call this, I got my SA back. And I better refresh this one. And I got my SA back. Okay, so there you go. I just wanted to show you that I, I stepped away for a minute and started thinking about it, and I was like, wait a minute, there's there's a more efficient way to do this. So rather than make another video, I just want to tack that on to the end of this one. There you go. I'm done now.